A video is playing on a monitor and plane that's about to make its descent. A man is getting nervous, when a woman next to him starts talking to him. He immediately tells her about a videotape that supposedly kills you in 7 days after you've watched it. The man had met a woman precisely a week ago, who sent him said video. He found an old VCR and played the tape. When it was over, his phone ringed and a girl's voice told him that he has 7 days. After the call, everything had became strange. Suddenly, his nose starts bleeding and he goes to the toilet. A second woman appears next to the first one and she tells her about the guy. He is in the toilet, when strange things start happening. The second woman bangs on the door and asks him if he'd made a copy of the tape, saying that she's also seen it. All of a sudden, the strange video begins appearing on all the monitors on the plane. Black liquid is running out of the toilet and the man freaks out, trying to get away from it. The plane begins to fall, as a long-haired girl can be seen coming out of the monitors. Two years later, Skye is at a bazaar and she sees a VCR. Gabriel approaches and tells her that he'll buy it. The guy selling the vintage things had told him that it belonged to the man that died in the plane crash. Later, Gabriel is trying to fix the VCR and an old tape pops out. Sky is getting ready to leave his place, when he asks her if she wants to watch the tape with him. She's in a hurry and leaves, so he decides to watch it by himself. The tape doesn't work at first and when he goes to light a cigarette the VCR suddenly starts working. He watches the strange tape. A woman can be seen brushing her hair as well as a long-haired girl's reflection. The woman is seen jumping of a cliff. When the video ends, Gabriel gets the call from the girl that he has seven days to live. A fly comes out of his cigarette. Gabriel goes to the window to smash it and notices that the rain outside is falling in the wrong direction. Julia is in her bed listening to Holt tell her the story of Orpheus. They almost kiss, but his alarm activates. She tells him that he needs to pack for college. Holt's dead is putting his luggage in the trunk telling him that they need to go. They say goodbye and he drives off to college. Six weeks later, the two of them talk on Skype. He tells her about his classes and that it will be a week until he comes back home. Suddenly his friends appear and drag him away to go to a party. The next day, she's waiting for him to text her back. That night, she has a wet dream about Holt, that quickly turns into a nightmare and she wakes up screaming. Suddenly, she gets a call from Holt, but when she picks up, it's Sky asking where he is. Her face is distorting as she tells Julia that Holt is a dead man walking, because the girl is coming for him and she can't be stopped. The call drops and she calls him on his phone, but he doesn't pick up. Julia packs and drives off to see Holt. While driving, she keeps leaving him voice messages. She arrives at his campus the next day. Julia knocks on his door and when no one answers, she walks in. She finds his phone on the ground. Holt has text messages from Sky, telling him to meet her after biology class. Julia grabs a key from his board and takes a look at his schedule to see when he has that class. Later, Gabriel is seen giving a lecture. He's their professor. Julia walks into class and he immediately calls attention to her. Gabriel ends the lecture and Julia goes over to talk to him. Gabriel tells her that he can't really remember him and she should move on because he might have simply found someone else. Julia doesn't believe that he doesn't know Holt so she follows him. She sees which floor he got off from and takes the second elevator. When she can't choose the same floor, she uses the key she found in Holt's dorm room. The moment she steps out from the elevator she sees a TV. There's a camera mounted on it, recording everyone that enters. She finds a book by Gabriel on the mystery of Samara, the long-haired girl from the videos. On the same floor, Julia finds a room with distorted pictures from students and sees one from Holt too. Checking out the room, she sees Skye arguing with Gabriel. She tells him that Holt hasn't been picking up his phone and that Gabriel has to help her because he started everything. Skye explains that she can feel Samara and that she knows what they're doing. Gabriel tells her to go home and wait until someone comes to watch the video. Julia notices a few screens with running countdowns with Holt's name on one of them. She runs out after Skye, asking her why she called her and where she can find Holt. Sky tells her that she can help her but that she needs to show her something first. They walk into Sky's place and she immediately sits down on her computer. Julia notices Sky's phone ring. Holt is texting her and Julia sends him a message. He asks her if she's with Sky, while she is queuing up a copy of the video for her to watch. Holt tells her not to watch the video. Sky notices that Julia has her phone and they fight. She begs her to watch the video, but Julia pushes her off and hides. Sky begs her for help. Suddenly, the video starts playing on the computer. Sky smashes her computer. For a moment, she thinks that she has outsmarted Samara, but her TV begins playing the video. Sky plugs it out, but it just comes on again. Samara begins walking out of the well and Sky smashes the TV too. Samara keeps coming out of the TV and Sky doesn't know what to do anymore. Samara lifts up the screen and comes out of it going after Sky. She tries to pull away from her, but Samara keeps coming for her and kills her. Julia hears the screams and peeks through the keyhole. Suddenly, Samara appears at the door. 
She unlocks it and when it opens, Julia can see Skye's body on a chair. She runs toward the apartment door, but realizes she needs a key to get out. Julia walks over to Skye's body to take her keys and when she sees her face she freaks out. She unlocks the door and Holt appears in front of the place, asking her what happened and if she's seen the video. Julia tells him that Skye is dead. Later that night, Holt calls Gabriel. The professor knows about Skye and tells him that people have started dropping out of the watching circle. Holt asks does he still has someone watching the video for him. Gabriel promises he will find him someone to watch it. Holt apologizes to Julia for not telling her, but says that he didn't want her involved. He'd seen the video 12 hours after Sky when Gabriel asked him to be a part of an experiment. The professor has told them that it would prove the existence of the afterlife and the tape is a doorway there. Holt explains that after you see the tape you have 7 days to find someone to watch it too and you're safe. Julia is mad at him for getting involved in something like that. Later, she wakes up next to Holt and sees an imprint of a hand on his back. Julia gets up and watches Holt's copy of the video. It's filled with disturbing and surreal images. It ends with an image of the well. The phone rings. Julia gets the 7 days call. She has a vision of a door and when she touches the handle, her hand gets burned. Holt wakes up and she tells him that she watched it. When Gabriel calls he tells him that she'll need someone to watch a copy of the video for her. Later, the two of them are driving to get to Gabriel, when Julia sees a bird crash into the window and they almost have an accident. Holt doesn't see the bird. She runs out of the car and finds the bird flopping on the street, when she almost gets hit by a truck. Holt pulls her away in time, but the bird isn't there anymore. They arrive at Gabriel's place and Holt tells him that unlike the rest, she got marked on the first day, which means that the curse is changing. As they're taking a scan of Julia's hand, Gabriel tells them that he was wrong about what the tape and the experiment meant. He tells Julia what she needs to do to stay alive, but she doesn't want to do that to another person. Holt convinces her to make a copy of the video, just in case. When she goes to do it, Gabriel notices that her version won't copy. They realize that her copy is a larger file than the original. They scrub through the video and see the bird Julia saw in the car. Gabriel says that it shouldn't be there. They go to his office to get his equipment. He goes through the video and finds data contained in the additional still frames in Julia's copy, basically a video within a video. Holt sits down to watch the video with her, but Gabriel says that it might be intended for Julia alone. She convinces him to let her watch it by herself. He holds her hand. The video is much different than before. She tells them what she sees, a clock, a cross and a flood and a girl. She sees a burning body, a door and Samara at the end. Gabriel says that those images have never been on the tape before. He also explains that in some cultures burning the body releases the spirit as well. Julia remembers seeing the cross before and she shows them. Gabriel tells her that is the place where Samara was buried. Julia says that it's where they need to go and suddenly the phone rings. Someone has informed Gabriel that the police are on their way there. He will stay back to talk to the police because he feels guilt for Skye's death. Before they leave he gives them his entire research on Samara and the tape. Julia and Holt drive to the church where she was buried. She says that the images on the tape were Samara's story, which she wanted heard. The girl was abandoned as a child and no one knew where she came from. When she was adopted, they realized that there was something evil inside her. They tried to kill her, but Samara survived seven days at the bottom of the well. Her body was discovered years later. However, Julia doesn't know why her body was taken to the town where she was buried. She has another vision of a pregnant girl that was on the tape. They arrive at a motel and get a room. Julia sees the pregnant girl on a picture and asks the owner about it. She tells them that the girl disappeared 30 years prior and that she doesn't want to talk about it further. The two of them go to the church and walk into an AA meeting. They look around, but when they don't find something they think would help, they leave. Holt asks a man about the church and why it closed. As he's telling him that it happened after a flood, Julia sees a flock of birds showing her to the cemetery. Meanwhile, Gabriel is packing up his stuff when he notices something. He takes another look at Julia's palm print and tries to call them. He can't reach them, so he decides to find them. Gabriel leaves Holt a message that the mark on Julia's Pam is actually in Braille. Simultaneously, Julia and Holt are at the cemetery looking for Samara's grave. Julia finds an unmarked one and has a flashback about it from the video. She calls Holt over, then listens to some kind of sound coming from inside the grave. Holt finds her and Julia tells him that Samara is there. They open the grave up, but find no body inside. Julia thinks that someone has moved her. She sees an inscription inside the grave and crawls in. The inscription says she will find you Julia. Suddenly, she gets closed up inside the grave and hears something behind her. The video begins to play on her phone. Chains can be seen on the video and they suddenly materialize on Julia's arm. She gets dragged through the grave up to the well. Suddenly, Holt pulls her out. It seems that she had another vision. A dog starts barking at them and when Holt tells its owner that they're looking for Samara, he tells them that he knows. The man takes them to Burke's house. 
When they arrive he tells him that he found them breaking inside the grave. He asks him if he should take them to the sheriff's office, but Burke says that he can take care of it. Burke invites them in. They sit down for tea and he asks how they found her grave. Julia tells him about her vision that got them there, as well as the vision she had inside. Burke tells them how the body came to their town. Their priest wanted to give her a resting place, but the town almost got destroyed because of that. Holt realizes that the flood was because of her. Burke tells Julia that he also believed that Samara was trying to tell him something. He was also pulled inside the grave and had terrible visions. After that he lost his eyesight, which almost came as a relief. The priest requested her body to be moved. Before they leave, he warns them that they shouldn't look for her and tells Julia that even if she had visions, it doesn't mean she understands what they were about. They shake hands and he reads the inscription in braille on her palm, but doesn't tell her what it means. He says that they should be careful. Holt and Julia get out of there and still go looking for the body. On their way there they get stopped by the police because the road has been closed. Suddenly, Julia has another vision of the pregnant girl and runs out of the car. The cop stops Holt and she follows her vision down the road. It takes her to a crashed car with Gabriel inside. Julia runs over to him and he wakes. He tries to tell her about the inscription on her hand, as Holt is running toward them, pulling her aside in time before a pole can crush her too. Gabriel dies. Later, Holt brings his bag and says that Gabriel wanted to tell them something. Julia says that the girl wanted to tell them something too, that she's connected to Samara. She says that they need to go back. In the hotel, Julia says that she can feel her pain and suffering. Holt leaves to bring back some food and leaves her there alone. Julia watches the video again and realizes what the ring in the beginning is. Meanwhile, Holt walks into a diner and sits next to the owner of the motel. He asks her about the girl from the photo. Simultaneously, Julia goes back to the abandoned church and breaks in. She immediately heads to the church bell and sees water underneath it. She bangs on the ground and realizes that it's hollow. Julia breaks off the flooring and finds a trapdoor underneath. The woman is telling Holt about the girl. She tells him that she just vanished. Julia goes under the church and finds a room. She sees the pregnant girl's sweater and a bird cage she saw in the video. Julia realizes that the priest kept the girl down there and suddenly hears someone behind her. When she turns around the girl disappears and Julia has a vision of how the room was in the past. There's banging on the door in front and she walks opens it. Julia flashes her light inside and in a vision of the girl appears again. She finds chains on the floor and markings on the wall of the days the girl was kept inside. She figures out that it amounts to eight and a half months. The girl was pregnant with Samara while she was being kept in. In the meantime, the owner tells Holt that they never found out what happened to the girl. She also tells him that Burke is the priest. Holt leaves and Julia arrives at Burke's house. Julia tells him that she understands the visions and asks about the priest. He asks her about what she knows and she tells him what she found out about the girl. Julia says that the curse will never stop until she's free. Holt comes back into the motel and finds her gone. Burke tells Julia that he was certain that he would father a child that would change the world. He shows her that he took his own sight and pins her down when she tries to run. Julia realizes that he's Samara's father and that she's still his prisoner because he moved her bones. Julia runs, but can't get out of the house. Burke turns off all the lights and looks for her. He tells her that she's the twelfth person that has looked for Samara and that she can't bring her peace, but instead would unleash hell on the world. Burke finds her and hits her. Meanwhile, Holt is running to his house. The priest is going after Julia and says that he will not allow her to set Samara free. He chained the girl up because she was trying to kill their child and that he should have let her. The two of them struggle and he falls down the stairs. Julia has another vision. She follows a light to a room and when she opens the door she sees many of the things she had seen in the video. Julia follows her visions around the house, not understanding what Samara is trying to show her, when her nose starts bleeding. Samara shows her where she is buried, so Julia starts tearing off the wall. Meanwhile, Holt breaks into the house and hears Julia upstairs. He looks for her through the house and gets to the stairs, when he finds something on the floor. The priest is still alive and knocks him out. Julia tears through the wall and finds Samara's remains. Burke gets to her too and starts strangling her. Samara appears on Julia's phone. Julia has another vision in which Samara asks her not to leave her. Samara raises out of Julia's phone. Burke turns around when he hears her and she heals his eyes. He finally looks at her and dies just like the rest. Holt wakes up and finds Julia. She tells him that it's not over yet. That night, they're seen burning Samara's remains. Julia says that she's free. Later, Julia is taking a shower and Holt finally listens to Gabriel's voicemail, saying that the inscription on Julia's hand is in braille. Holt finds the scan of her palm in one of his books. Meanwhile, Julia sees that she has a broken callus on her palm. She tears at it. When she comes out of the shower Julia begins to choke and to take out strands of hair from her throat a well as a sack made out of hair. A fly comes out of it. Julia looks at herself in the mirror, 
then has another vision of Samara, saying that it won't stop. Holt translates the braille inscription from Julia's hand and before he reaches to the final letter the computer goes haywire sending the video to all of Julia's contacts. When the translation is done it shows the word rebirth. He calls for Julia. She is looking at herself in the mirror and when she wipes the vapor off of it, she's turned into Samara.